Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I am in my kitchen and this is going to be a little bit of a different video because I want to cook something for you and I think this will be a mega lesson. A lot to learn in this lesson, a lot of vocabulary, a lot of terms we use in English when cooking. I want to make for you today from scratch we use that term when cooking. When we make cookies from scratch, we make it from ingredients like sugar and flour. So today's recipe will be a Ukrainian red beet borscht from scratch. I got the idea for this video from watching another YouTube channel called Crazy Russian Dad, and he ate some borscht soup. I've never had borscht. I've never even had beets, so I'm not sure if I will even like it. But I know a lot of my subscribers are from Ukraine, Poland, Belarus, and Russia, where borscht is the national dish, at least in Ukraine, the national dish. And I do know that some of my subscribers are from countries where you cannot eat pork. So just a little warning, this dish is made with pork, if you are not allowed to watch it, I totally understand. I'm sure there are many babushkas with their own borscht recipe. I'm sure I'm going to mess it up in some way, but I wanted to try it. I wanted to show you some terms we use with cooking, and I thought, let's do it on camera. Let's do it on video. Maybe you guys can get a pretty good lesson for English with this. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a mega lesson, a pretty long lesson, not a mini lesson, a mega lesson. So grab a pen, maybe a notebook, get ready to take some notes, sit back, relax as I make this borscht for the first time. But before I make anything, I need to go to the store to get some ingredients. So let's go. It is fairly early in the morning on a Saturday morning, a rainy Saturday morning, but I am at a place where any good cooking story has to begin. That's Walmart. I need some ingredients for this borscht. I hope I'm saying that correctly, borscht. I will look that up to make sure. But I have my shopping list, I have my wallet, and I have my mask. So let's go do some shopping. All right, we've gotten the groceries. It started pouring while I was doing my groceries. Luckily, the rain has let up a little bit, so it's not as heavy. So I'm gonna head home. I gotta do a live stream first, and then after, I will cook some borscht for lunch. So I'm now home. It's actually the next day. So I need to peel back the curtain a little bit for you, which means, give you a little glimpse into what is going on behind the scenes. The clip you just watched has actually gone out to channel members already. I sometimes do that for channel members because they support me. 
I give them little looks into videos that will be coming out. And Michel has been very helpful. He knows more about borscht than I do. And I'm not pronouncing the T anymore. I was pronouncing it wrong the whole time. Borscht. And he said that the beets that I picked up, these sliced beets, might not work. And I agree with him. But the store I went to yesterday did not have real beets. But I went to the store this morning. I will be cooking that borscht with real beets. Michelle, thank you so much for your insights, for your suggestions. I totally respect them. You know more than I do. I will use that. So Mega also said, and she used the correct term, that I got a lot of ready-made items. So my minced garlic. I'm not chopping up or mincing my garlic. So that's why I hope no babushkas watch this video because they would be very upset. We have grandmothers, grandfathers maybe, in the United States who believe in making everything from scratch. And I used that term earlier. I'm still making it from scratch, but as Michelle said, maybe I have Americanized it. I have cut some corners. That's what we say when we like make it a little easier on ourselves, but sometimes that could affect the taste. So if you love borscht and you see that I'm making it the wrong way, and maybe at the end of the video, I don't like the way it turned out, well, we can blame it on the fact that I cut some corners. And since it is the next day, the weather is a lot better. It's not raining anymore and it's not quite as cold, but I still want to make this borscht for you. I have the ingredients laid out. I have some water boiling in my pot and my pan. Sometimes dust will accumulate on the pots and the pans if you don't use them for a while. And I haven't used that large pot all summer. I have my laptop out so I can see the recipe as I make it. But first, I want to prepare all the ingredients. Peel the potatoes, peel the beets, cube them, shred them, and I'll show you exactly what I do as I do it. So that is what we call a pot, and that is what we call a pan. Now I'm going to wash and peel and shred all of the ingredients that I need. Luckily on my counter, there is a built-in cutting board so I can cut right on the counter if I wanted to, but I have heard that beets can stain your fingers. I'm worried that it might stain my counter. So I think I'll get out a cutting board just in case. And I can use a cutting board like this. If it gets stained, I don't really care. And to do that, I will use something we call simply a peeler. And I like to do it right over the sink, just so there's no real mess. See, there's an eye right there. Just take it out like that. So I've never worked with beets before. I thought they were more purple than this. I took off the ends because I can't imagine that you use them. And now I will go about peeling them. Maybe they darken up after you boil them. I'll be honest, the beets smell really good. We might call that smell earthy, like potatoes and these beets smell like they came from the dirt, but in a good way. So we would call that smell earthy. So right now in my head, I am a little worried that I didn't actually get beets, but I took a picture of what I bought and it says beets, but I watched a video of someone peeling beets and they were a lot more purple. Some of you at home right now might be thinking, oh, that dumb American, he didn't get real beets. Oh no, I just looked, it said golden beets. Is that gonna mess things up? Sometimes in English we say you had one job. When people mess things up, that should be very simple. I had one job. 
get real beats and I couldn't even do that. I got golden beats. I've never heard of golden beats. Maybe I will add a few of these at the end of the boil when the soup is almost ready to make it taste a little more authentic. This is bad. I'm gonna continue with the golden beets and then you can just bash me in the comments if I messed up too badly. I'm sorry, Ukraine, Russia, Poland. I'm an American, I'm sorry. Thankfully, I just checked Facebook. Michelle and Eugene are on there. Maybe they can tell me if golden beets are bad. At least I know how to buy sausage. So I'm going to start browning this sausage. Yes, brown is a verb. That means when we take meat that's pink, we make it brown. So I'm going to brown this sausage right now. The kitchen should smell amazing. At least I know how to buy sausage. So I'm gonna brown up the sausage. Again, I apologize if your religion does not allow you to eat pork. I just thought that it would taste a little better for me if I added some meat. So this would be called the non-vegetarian version. If it's vegetarian, it has no meat. While the sausage is browning, I am going to start cubing the potatoes. Cubing is a noun we use to basically make them into squares. My knife skills are not that great, so I am not going to film a lot of this, but basically I will make this potato into a cube. So things like that, that is called cubing. I'm doing that while the meat is browning. And of course, you want to make the cubes about the same size so they cook at about the same rate. The sausage is coming along nicely. The recipe does not say to drain the sausage. If it did, I would put one of these in the sink, put the sausage in there to get rid of the juices. That's what we call it in English. But apparently, the recipe calls for those juices to be added to the borscht. The recipe says to simply set the meat aside, meaning put it off to the side and just wait for the other ingredients to be ready. The recipe says the prep time for this meal is 25 minutes. Prep time is the time it takes you to prepare the ingredients for cooking the chopping, the shredding, all the cutting stuff. But for me, it takes a lot longer because like I said, my knife skills are not that good. I'm very slow at it. I don't wanna cut myself. Cooking makes you a little warm, so I had to take my flannel shirt off. The potatoes are cubed, now on to shredding the beets. To shred the beets, I'm going to use something like this. You might hear it called a box grater and it works something like this. I added my water, said two quarts. I converted that to eight cups. I don't know if that's enough though. I may add some more as time goes on. I put in the meat. The water should be boiling again pretty soon and then I will add the beets, wait a little while, add the potato, carrots, all that good stuff. I took a shortcut with the carrots. They're already peeled. Now I'm shredding them. All right, here it is. It's been in there for about 10 minutes boiling with my golden beets and my sausage. I don't know, I hope it's okay. My carrots and my potatoes are ready to go in next in about five minutes. While everything is boiling, I'm gonna chop up this onion and then put it in my pan, brown it up, get it ready to add to the borscht. Now my onion is chopped. Let's just go over a couple cooking verbs. Uh, a couple will be review. With that sausage, I could have said I'm going to crumble that sausage, meaning make it into smaller bits. With the Potatoes, I said that I cubed them, made them into squares. With the beets and carrots, we shredded them, and that onion, we chopped. So a little smaller than cubed. So I'm not happy right now. 
our house always has vegetable oil. The recipe calls for vegetable oil to put in the pan so you can brown the onion. We have none. So I don't want to run to the store again. I'm going to use some butter. I hope the babushkas don't mind if I use butter instead of oil. But we love using butter when we can here in the United States. So maybe I will Americanize this a little bit more. Sorry. The potatoes, the carrots are now in. I am going to cover, so we call it cover, for another 15 minutes. Butter is in the pan, or sometimes you will hear this called a skillet. Once that melts a little more, I will put our onions in. Onion, butter in there. You might hear this called sweating the onion, but we cook it just so it isn't as strong or it isn't as potent. Raw onions can be pretty strong or overpowering, so I am going to try to dilute them a little bit, make them not quite so strong, but it is starting to smell really good in here. Next thing we should talk about is this cabbage. And it says to core and shred the cabbage. We already talked about shredding, but this is the core. This is the center, the core. But when you use core as a verb, that means you take this part out. So you could core an apple. I'm going to core this cabbage and then shred it with a knife, not with that box grater. So the core of the cabbage has been taken out. Nobody wants to eat that. I'm going to half it, which is another verb, meaning to cut it in half, use only half of it, and then I'm going to shred it. Onions looking pretty good. There's my shredded cabbage. It was a little messy, but the job is done. The can of diced tomatoes will also go in the borscht. But this is tomato paste, and I am going to put it in the skillet with the onion. But to open those cans, I need what we call a can opener. Pretty simple. Can opener opens cans. That's what tomato paste looks like. It smells like spaghetti sauce. Tomato paste is in. Now I need to add the water. And we use three-fourths cup of water for that. Yeah, we use cups in our recipes here. Something tells me you probably don't. I'm making a little bit of a mess here in the kitchen. I don't want to show you that. But my potatoes are taking a little longer than I thought to soften. So I'm going to cook them for a little longer. Maybe I cut them a little too big. That's what the tomato paste, onion, and water look like right now. Eventually that will go right into the pot. While those potatoes are cooking or softening, um, let me tell you about this thing. It's a little dirty, but it's a rubber spatula. I like using these because it really helps when you need to scrape down the sides of a skillet or a pot. And we call this thing a pot holder. You put it on your hand and it stops it from being burnt. I hope I'm not going to mess this up, but I'm going to add a little beet juice that came with these sliced beets into the borscht to give it a better color. That's what canned beets look like. I'm not sure if you have them in your country, but. Next I will put in the can of diced tomatoes and the cabbage. I put all of the ingredients in. It says to cover, cover with the heat off for five minutes and then it should be ready. So I'm super nervous. It didn't go exactly like I wanted with the golden beets and adding the beet juice, but hopefully it will turn out right. I don't know if you can mess up borscht, but if you can, I probably did. So when I went to the store, they didn't have any fresh parsley and it said you want to garnish your soup with parsley, meaning add it on top at the end. So I got a parsley grinder. We'll see. No fresh parsley. Sorry. And I don't have any brown bread. I'm told you're supposed to serve borscht with brown bread. I can feed an army with the amount of soup that I have. If you ever hear that in English, you can feed an army with that. It means you made a lot, maybe too much. It's only my daughter and myself who are here right now, and we have like 
10 servings of borscht. Maybe I'll see if my neighbors want some. We call this a ladle, you know, really deep spoon. So I am going to ladle some soup into a bowl. Or should I say borscht? I'm going to ladle some borscht into a bowl. Because this is called a Ukrainian dish, I know it's available in Russia and other places. I'm going to use a blue and a yellow bowl. Yellow is my favorite color, so I will take the yellow one and give my daughter the blue one. She will try it off camera because she doesn't want to be on her dad's YouTube videos. Who can blame her? Here is the finished product. All right, I, I've kind of made a mess of my kitchen, but I'm going to mix in the sour cream a little bit, and then I will take a nice big bite of hopefully a little bit of everything actually oh it's still still pretty hot but oh, it actually smells really good All right, so hopefully that's a bite a messy bite a bite of everything a blow on it to cool it off I really like it I'm not even kidding I do taste the beets because it's a new flavor for me um, I wouldn't call it a potato, but it is kind of earthy. It has a little crunch from the cabbage, a nice kind of milky taste from the sour cream. The sausage is a nice touch. The potatoes are nicely cooked. I would say that I would definitely eat borscht again. I have plenty to eat, 10 more servings. I'll probably be eating borscht for the next week, so it's a good thing that I do like it. All right, let's let's actually take another bite. It's really good. I literally took another couple bites off camera. This is really good. I'm not even kidding. I hope I made it correctly, but if not, I like what I made. There are a whole lot of flavors going on in there without any one of the flavors being too overpowering. On some bites, I get a little sausage or that crunchy cabbage. Other bites, I get, might get more potato. Really good stuff. I can see why it's so popular in those Slavic countries. If I know anything about soups or stews or borscht like this, it's even better the next day. I want to give a big thank you to Eugene and Michelle for helping me with this borscht. My favorite thing about having this YouTube channel is learning about other cultures. So thank you so much for helping me do that. And of course, helping you with your English. I'm a member of the Clean Bowl Club. We sometimes say Clean Bowl Club or Clean Plate Club when something was really good and you ate the whole thing. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm gonna finish my bowl. But if you want more English learning up there is a whole playlist where I try things, try different foods. And below that is some practice on your listening. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.